untying the knot is back and bigger and better than ever before. And we have its star, the divorce diva, celebrity attorney Vicki Ziegler, right here on set. Vicki, welcome to the docket. Oh, thank you for having me. I, oh, God, this is so exciting to have you. So uh, the premiere was Sunday. Yes. And it's, it's a great show. And now it was half an hour. It's now an hour. Yes, so I think what happened was people needed to get invested in the couple more. 30 minutes of television, as you well know, is really only about 24 minutes with commercials. You couldn't really understand the depths of what's going on in a divorce case. So I think people were asking for more, so they expanded it to an hour. So we're, only, we're not only having one couple doing a mediation, but we're also having a B story. So I'm trying to educate people on what happens on a day-to-day -day basis in my office okay. when people come in for a consultation on all different types of family law issues. And who are the two guys in it? M the Malay brothers. Okay. So this is a funny story. So uh, when they were casting the show for last season, they said, you know any appraisers? I said, well, in the Strahan case, which is public record, um, in the newspaper, there was an auction, and I had them come, and there was 300 pieces of furniture that needed to be auctioned. Worked with them. They were fantastic. And I said, they're really cute. I think people would like them. And they're, they're not Yeah, and I like the, uh, the slate with you in the middle of the <laughs> two of them. So, okay, what is your philosophy mm -hmm. on how to get through a divorce most easily. It is difficult to try to navigate the emotional issues that happen, let alone the financial issues. And I think when it comes to mediation, because that's really what the show is centered around. For me, I'm a litigator, but I'm also a mediator. And I think when you take people into a private room, not in the courthouse, and really let them speak, it's a cathartic journey to kind of tell their story. And then I, as an unbiased third party, come in and say, listen, I think a judge may do this, but if you can compromise, shelf the emotion, make this a business deal, you're gonna get through this, I guess, a little less painless. And and you know what? It's going to save you a lot of money, and then you can move on to the next chapter of your life. Speaking of money, let's see what Vicki has to say about money in the setting of divorce. When people are getting divorced, they fight over anything. The most expensive Tiffany lamp was sold for $2.8 million. You can have a stripper car. I just like half. Cat fight. I have never dealt with a voodoo altar before. I need mean custody. Is that a pig? Should we just end with a pig? Okay, so what, uh, wh who are these couples? that take part in the show. So these are couples that so were there's cast. some celebrity couples. Uh, yes, we just had on Sunday night uh, Toya and Mickey. Toya was, uh, in, was not married but had a child with little Wayne and apparently she is so popular in her community. People love this woman. She's a best-selling author and she has this huge fan base. And they were really at their wits end. And it was a really interesting couple to try to navigate their divorce. And hopefully I've helped them. They're not divorced yet, but I think they adhered to my decisions and recommendations. Well, the ratings uh, are going through the roof, and part of what's been popularized is this idea of a hall pass. What is that? <laughs> I really fainted because people have to understand this is an unscripted show. I walk in, I know some of the assets, but I don't know what they're going to say. Okay. So when Mickey tells me, um, I asked, do you cheat on Toya? He says, no, but I get a hall pass for eight days so of the year. So this is a real thing. Oh, this is real. So she said, I want to control, because there's so much everyone doesn't see, obviously. The mediation is for hours, and everyone just gets a few-minute glimpse. So he, she said, I I want to control his cheating. I want to know that there's certain days that he cheats because I don't know where he's going and what he's doing. So as long as I know for eight days that's all he's going to do, then the rest of the year, and I'm not good at math, but 365 minus eight is whatever, he's with me and he's faithful. And I said, really? And she said, well, that's how it worked. What is your opinion of that? That does not fly with me. You know what? Why get married to have a hall pass? Right. Well, no. Why get married, period. To cheat. End of story. <laughs> end of segment. Everybody well, have a good day. Seema, That's the people want their cake and eat it, too. And it's nice to have one foot in the door and one foot out the door. And you know what? Listen, non-traditional marriages, if people want that, that's fantastic. I don't judge. But for me, that... That wouldn't work? Personally, right. No, Not I, I agree. Let's uh, look at what else you said about the facets of divorce. Deal with all facets of a divorce. I want to freeze my eggs. I am the prenup queen. So you thought you were divorced? For the last two and a half years. <gasps> okay, everybody, hold on to your socks. He still sleeps in my bed. What? Most people don't get divorced because they have different tastes in music. I didn't see this coming. Are you ready to try to end it? Absolutely not. I find it a little insulting. That is not right. We don't play that game. These are the terms, this is the deal. Can we 
you just make a commercial of all your faces? <laughs> like just your reaction to the couple. <laughs> you can't. I, I think you must be from New York too, because New I York, think New Jersey. Yes, I think it's a it's an East Coast yeah. thing. Okay, so what? I, I just I, I want to ask you a little bit more because of your facial expressions, mm -hmm. how personally involved do you get? Because it seems that you personally are invested in these couples. You seem to really care. I do. I'm uh, kind of unlike, I think, most attorneys in the sense that I actually get invested in my clients. And I think there are attorneys out there that do, but I think in general, I care about these people. I've helped them off screen actually get divorced, walk them to the courthouse and finalize it so I can actually thank them for being on air because airing your dirty laundry to millions of people is tough. And I really appreciate it, you know, because they, they are really coming out there vulnerable. And I'm hopefully helping them get to the next level and get divorced because people are stuck, Seema, for years in a divorce and they live in the same house and it's tragic. I know my parents were for like 50,000 years. <laughs> okay now you said though most people don't get divorced because of their different tastes. <laughs> Let's see <laughs> what you were meant. You know early on in our marriage I guess it was probably even right before um, our son was born she started getting really heavy into yoga. Did yoga change her? You know you can't kid around about something or someone without it being bad thing for your cheat. I have a lot more rough edges. You know, she listens to The Grateful Dead. I listen to like Slayer and Clutch and you know, bands like that. Most people don't get divorced because they have different tastes in music. Finish that thought. Most people don't get divorced because they have different tastes in music. Right. Well People change, and obviously people come to a marriage with different characteristics and different things that they're interested in, different hobbies. However, that's not really the, the cutoff date in terms of what really breaks these two apart. And this is gonna air on Wednesday night, and this is a really sad couple for me. It was a sad mediation because they were visibly upset. Meredith was crying throughout the actual entire taping of the show, and we taped for days, by the way. So for me, it was really hard to hear that they were so in love and so attracted to each other because he was this motorcycle driver, you right. know, and she she was so hot and heavy for it, and then all of a sudden you get married, she changed, she became more into yoga, was afraid of the motorcycle, has a baby, and she's not attracted to this person anymore, and they think, wait a second, were we right for each other in the beginning? And most people don't set themselves up to get married to actually get divorced. So for me, they were really nice people individually, but I knew that their marriage was over. But why does this keep happening? Mm -hmm. why, do, why does this uh, idea of you fall in love, mm -hmm. you put on your best face, yeah. and you want to adopt the other person's likes and dislikes, mm -hmm but then you grow apart. What's the answer? Well, I wrote a book called The Premarital Planner, and I think the problem is most people don't really get a strong marital foundation before they start. And then when they and have to- And what does that require? Tell yeah, us. so I mean, there's so many things. You have to get emotionally and financially naked. You have to tell the truth about, do you have a bad credit score? Do you have a Corvette account, a Chanel account? You know, what are your spending what, habits? What are, what and what are those <laughs> things? Well, I think everybody has a little private account that they want to stash money away so you can go purchase something without telling the other spouse. <laughs> but I think you have to explain, you know, I'm a spender. I'm a saver. Where do you see yourself in five years? What are your roles and expectations? Do you want a child? Can you even have a child? I think so many people get married with the allure that they're in love and there's lust, but they don't talk about the important issues before they actually get married. And then when they have to weather the storm with a real issue comes, a death, God forbid, a child being brought into the world, things are difficult and stress layers on and they're not ready for it. And what about the attraction issue? Because when you're mm -hmm. saying real life like death or this and that, but one partner could get sick, people change physically, mm -hmm. How do you resolve mm -hmm. staying attracted to your partner for life? Really hard, and I think just like you come to your job here and you work hard and you get a paycheck, that's your reward. I think a marriage is the same way. You have to look at it like it's work, and it's fun work, but you have to stay on top of your game. You have to always feel good, look good, work on it, have date night, but not only date night, talk, put your phone down, engage, hold hands when you're driving. Do the things that keep you connected, because I think when people start lose that luster, all of a sudden, week after week, all of a sudden they're not intimate, things go awry. You have resentment, and then all of a sudden you're knocking on my door. Well, I just see too many couples taking each other for granted mm -hmm. and not taking care of yourself physically. Right. I mean, listen, no one is going to look this good. She just had a baby, everyone. I'm like, trying to suck it in, by so the way, and it's not, it's not working. I, 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 I still don't believe you. But, okay, before I let you go, we have to show what you say about prenups because this yes. is a very important question. Mm -hmm. A growing part of my practice is drafting prenuptial agreements. Josephine's here. Hi, nice to meet you. Same here. You look lovely. You too. Have a seat. Please take your coat off.
If more people drafted prenuptial agreements, there would be less acrimony and they'd be saving so much money in a courtroom. Uh, my daughter and her fiance, lovely couple, I would love for her to have a prenup down the road. So this is for your daughter? Correct. I didn't see this coming. I mean, individual clients come to me for prenups all the time. Mothers for their daughters? Mm, not so much. She would just scream that she knows that I'm saying these things right now. I mean, let's be honest, prenups are sensitive topics. So honestly, I need her daughter and her fiance on the same page. The mom can't get a prenup for the daughter, can she? <laughs> no, but she can try to bring that entrance to her so I could actually meet her. And the whole concept was she wouldn't have met me unless we kind of played a little joke on her and right. made her think I was and somebody else. Do you think a prenup is for every couple? Almost every couple. Absolutely. In this, in this country, I believe that even if you have a lot of debt and you have no assets, the future, you don't know what it holds for you. So you could earn, you could get an inheritance, and you need to understand the laws in, in every state that you live in. Okay, now, in an effort for Vicki Ziegler to take over the universe, which is, <laughs> which is happening, folks, <laughs> watch out you. for it. You have created an app, divorce dating app. Tell yes. us about it. Yes, it, this has been one of my dreams. I, I'm getting my mom on it. Oh, please. And I it's am. free. She's on it. Good. It's for elegant, mature people that are looking to attract She's other immature, like... immature, elegant, but immature. But <laughs> That's okay. There's, I'm sure there's some perfect matches for her on the site. And really what I've tried to do is al align people that have the same concept and background being affected by divorce because there's so many people out there that really don't say they're single they're divorced and there's a stigma and I want to break it so I created this app it's downloadable on iTunes it's free and I have such a great oh my god so many people are going they're talking they're going on dates and it has always been my dream for my clients to get back into the game remember that time again remember that feeling and I think so many people when they're divorced they don't know really how to approach it and in our app it's like hey we're all divorced we're in the divorce club we're right. cool we made a mistake it's all good and let's now find people people that have the mindset they want to date and move on with their lives. I think what makes you so special is that even though you're the divorce diva, mm -hmm. you have such an, a positive energy about you and you still believe in love. Oh, thank you so much. And believe I do. In love. I do. I really do. I believe that everyone can have love and happiness. You just have to work at it. And divorce is just a little lesson in life. You know, sh you know blow off your shoulders, get up and keep moving because you know what? You never know who's going to be there. Until the next divorce. <laughs> and until then, be sure to catch Vicki untying marital knots every Wednesday at 10 p.m. on Bravo.